With the Dirac notation developed during the last video, the mathematical description of measurements becomes nice and short. As an example, we will look at the polarization of a photon. The experiment I describe here is one of my favorites, because it aptly demonstrates that mathematics is the only tool that enables us, or at least me, to make correct predictions, and yet you can do this at home with a laser pointer and three pairs of 3D glasses, or one and a half if you're willing to break them apart. A photon is a light particle, and it has a certain polarization. For the nonce, you can just think of this polarization as the direction it is wobbling in, although this picture has its limits. Most light is unpolarized, meaning that the sum of the polarizations of all photons averages to zero. The light from a laser can be polarized, this depends on the laser design. So here's our setup. We have a beam of unpolarized light hitting a polarization filter. This filter only lets light of a certain polarization through. Let's say we set it to horizontally. Only some photons will get through, so we expect the intensity to shrink, but we also know that these photons will have a horizontal polarization. We then add another polarization filter which is oriented vertically. Because we know the incoming photons to be horizontally polarized, this filter will not let them through, so there will be no light behind that second filter. So far, things are simple and our expectations are exactly what happens in the experiment. Now we add a third polarization filter in the middle, which has a diagonal orientation. What happens now? To find out, let's go to a quantum description. Right after the horizontal filter, a photon can be described by a certain wave function that corresponds to horizontal polarization. Without knowing any details about it, we call it H. Let's, for simplicity's sake, go back one step and look at the setup without the middle filter. The vertical filter corresponds to a measurement. It asks for the probability to find the photon with vertical polarization. If we call the corresponding wave function v, then the measurement is represented by the operator cat v bra v. Just as vertical is orthogonal to horizontal in the geometrical sense, so is the vertical wave function orthogonal on the horizontal wave function. Mathematics therefore reproduces that the probability to measure a photon behind the two filters is zero. Now just as two coordinates are sufficient to describe a vector in two-dimensional space pointing in the direction of the polarization, so the two wave functions h and v suffice to describe all possible polarizations quantum mechanically. With this picture in mind, it is easy to see that the wave function describing diagonal polarization is just the sum of horizontal and vertical wave function multiplied by a normalization factor of 1 over the square root of 2. It directly follows that horizontally polarized light has a probability of 1 half to be measured in diagonal polarization or to pass the diagonal filter. So, the intensity of the laser behind the diagonal filter is halved, as indicated by the width, and the polarization is now diagonal, which I try to visualize by shortening the arrows. But now that the light is diagonally polarized, following the exact same mathematics, it now has a chance of one half to pass the vertical polarization filter. This means that a quarter of the light that passed the horizontal filter ends up with a vertical polarization with which it originally had no overlap at all. The operator describing the total effect of the diagonal and vertical polarization filter on light of any polarization is given by the product of the two operators describing the individual filters. As you can see on the screen, the calculation does not involve a huge number of steps, but it leaves room for some improvement. This will be tackled in the next video. Until then, enjoy life if you can, and don't be ashamed if you can't.